we are not alone here. There is an interest of the evil one uh, on your soul. Satan has an interest in your soul. And uh, there is an interest of the devil. God has an interest in your soul, of course. And uh, But in between your spirit is the soul. And of course, in between your soul is the body. And in every activities of life, in every pressure of life, in every circumstance that we face as man or as humans or as individuals, the strongest aspect of this whole thing is your choice, your disposition your position and your tech. God would not control you. You will either come under his control and then he will control you. Satan would not control you, but he would entice, try to seduce, try to influence you to come under his control. But ultimately, it boils down to your decision to whom you yield yourself to. So this is the route to heaven or to hell. God never puts anyone in or hell. Satan does not put anybody in or hell. Man puts himself in or hell. God does not kill. God does not want to kill. Rather, God would present to you life and death. Then you make the choice. Of course, the spiritual um, Powers that sustain death are traceable to the devil. The devil is behind death. The devil is behind destruction. The devil is a captain of eternal separation from God. In fact, Satan represents eternal separation from God. But that would not invade you as an individual until you let it through the power of choice. So the problem is not with the devil, the problem is not with God. Satan has no power to kill, but he could kill if you let him. So God respects our choices. You will realize that the real mistakes that actually happened in the Garden of Eden was traceable to the mistake of choice. Satan, of course, he tried, but he had no power to plug that tree and feed Adam and Eve. Nobody could feed Adam and Eve with that tree except themselves. Of course, the devil had the audacity to tempt, to entice, to want to influence, to want to manipulate, to want to like twist everything to see if he could succeed to propel the man to take that tree or to partake of that tree. And of course, God in his infinite Righteousness, supremacy, gentleness, holiness, and just. Also, in his infinite mercies, had spoken to Adam ahead of time and revealed to him face to face the consequences that would result from eating from the tree. So, 
Adam and Eve, of course, were aware of the consequences of the tree. And of course, Satan also understood that Adam knew. So he also came to preach his gospel to see if the man would in any ways respond or disobey God in obedience to Satan's voice. Up to date, trust me, we are still facing the same. Satan is still in the business of preaching lies, twisting scriptures, influencing us out of God's ordinances. Because the moment we make the choice to drift from God's ways, God's thoughts, God's standards, God's righteousness, God's wisdom, we fix the opposite. The opposite becomes the challenge because man ought to walk in the ways of God. Man held from God and there is no other way a man can be sustained except from God and by God because you feed from where you come from. If you feed contrary from that which is not compatible, it poisons your system. For instance, if you go feed on poison, you die. Because poison isn't compatible with your body systems. So God ought to be the source of our imaginations. He ought to be our thoughts. He ought to be our imaginations. He ought to be our ecstasies. He ought to be our uh, pleasures. The Bible says in his presence, there is fullness of joy and at his right hand, our pleasures evermore. So we are creatures that bring pleasure to God and also in his presence, we also derive pleasures. Every time we obey the voice of the Holy Spirit against the seductions and enticement of flesh or the devil, some level of God's presence is released as a reward for that sacrifice and obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And anytime we fall into flesh and allow flesh to, you know, thrive or overcome our spiritual, you know, leading, then something dies in our spirits. It's like there is a withdrawal of the presence of the Lord, not absolutely withdrawal, not absolute withdrawal, but there's, you, you, you lose something spiritually. Your connectivity will be short secured. It's like you, you, you will uh, drop drastically, you know, in your spiritual connectivity because you, you, you yielded yourself to the voice of the serpent. Every time the flesh entices you, the, listen to this, the ministry of the flesh is simple. In the Garden of Eden, the voice of the serpent is the ministry of the flesh. It's not different from the current enticements that we, we currently face as believers. It doesn't matter who you are. The serpent still has access to whisper into your urges, into your thoughts, into your cravings, into your desires. The, the, the serpent wants to influence your conducts. The serpent will whisper into your urges, into your thoughts, into your imaginations. Because you see, thoughts, imaginations, and urges are the powers that drive the human conducts. You see, your imaginations can cause you to do things that are contrary to God. Your imaginations also can cause you to do the things that are of God. So if you set your mind on the things above, then your imaginations will begin to conduct the holy things of the spirit. And over a period of time, you see yourself tapping into the energies, into the abilities of that thing that you've set your mind on. And that will infiltrate and filter through your entire body, through your neurons. And you will be energized, empowered by the Holy Spirit to act 
according to that which you have conceived through your imaginations by setting your thoughts, mind on the things above. Your thoughts also can influence your actions. Your urges can influence your actions. So when we speak of urges, imaginations and thoughts, we are talking about the powers that influence your choice or the power of your choice. Remember that within the mind, we have what we call the three faculties of the mind. You have your emotion, the intellect, and the willpower. The willpower is absolutely subject to the activities that go on in your intellect. And of course, also, it is subject to the pressure that go on, the urges, the emotions, the feelings that filter through your emotions. So these two factors within the faculty of the mind have absolute power to influence, to contrary influence, or to manipulate, to infiltrate your power of choice. So that's why if you feel your intellect with the knowledge of Jesus Christ, then your choices will often align with the will of God. If you're constantly practicing, cultivating the presence of the Lord, then of course your emotions will channel pure urges, pure feelings, pure affections, where all the contrary sexual urges will die because your urges, your feelings are pure. Your affections are set on the things above. And suddenly you see yourself living holy and no struggles anymore in your life because your emotions are subject to the Holy Spirit. The serpent is very crafty and crooked in several ways. He manifests in different ways. In the garden, he came as serpent and began to interact with the woman. Now, in the last days, of course, he is within our members. The voice of the serpent is found through the urges that we struggle with on a daily basis. And that's why if you want to cultivate the presence of the Lord and enjoy the pleasures of his manifest presence, then you would have to discipline yourself enough to war against the seductions of your flesh or Satan will jump into you and use you beyond your imaginations. For the fact that God had made man a free moral agent, man would have to have other option. And God, as a God of justice, you know, one of the strongest temperaments or nature or threats of God is justice or righteous. Because of his righteous nature, he would not compromise his standards. And wherever your choice drifts you to, God will respect. And of course, to all of our reciprocating to whatever it is, there are consequences aligned. Nobody, for instance, if you are overlapping right now and you're a healthy woman, Okay, and, and you carelessly, I don't care how spiritual you are, how anointed you are, or how Holy Ghost filled you are, if you open your laps for a, a man to penetrate you now that you are overletting, you're going to have a child. Because you've broken the principle. See, that's how it is. Everything in this world runs by laws. Everything in this world runs by principles. So it is important that we often must check to say what's the results, what's the consequences, what is the consequence, what is the dividends, what is the profit, what is the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, and the physical consequence of this action. It's not just about hell. You know, sometimes we've so concluded our lives to hell, fire, heaven, heaven, you know, and then we become too loose. My goodness me, for God's sake, uh, hell can be experienced here on earth. Just like Jesus prayed and said, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Let thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the same way, 
the will of the devil can be done on earth. Hell can reflect on earth. Men can go through hell. Why on earth? Just watch whatever God desires to see happen on earth. There is the counterfeit of every part of it that Satan wants to reproduce on earth. So if God desires the kingdom of heaven to manifest on earth, Satan also would work hard and he also desires to see that the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of hell should also manifest on earth. So while the kingdom of God brings life and peace, the kingdom of the devil will bring hell and death. And of course, Satan will always present hell and death with the pleasure of the flesh. He will manipulate you to say, hey, if you eat the tree, you should be like God. You see, that's how he coats, he coats his lies with sugar. Yet underneath the sugar is a poison. Underneath the sugar, the coated sugar is hell. Underneath the sugar is, of course, destruction and, and, and death, you see. So everything that comes out from the devil is death, destruction, hell. So don't you ever receive, whatever, if Satan gives you a billion, trust me, that is to the detriment of your soul. Do not exchange your soul with Satanism, with Illuminatis, with all the stupid courts. You must know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way. We are not in the world to seek for fame, for money, or for some kind of you know, pleasures of life. No, we are here on earth to seek the heartbeat of Jesus, to receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, to come into right standing with God, to align ourselves for eternity. In a twinkling of an eye, you know it, that the Bible has predicted that this earth will pass away with a fervent heat. It has been predicted. We can see that the whole world is turned upside down. You can see it. You don't need any prophet to tell you that this place is rounding up. People don't know what they can do. Presidents of the world have no control anymore. Media knows that things have gone out of control. The world is sinking. And you know that this is prophecy being fulfilled. We should be rejoicing stronger and further in righteousness and holiness, knowing well that this is the route out of the destruction pending the world. Don't care about anybody who wants to destroy you. Cut the devils off your life. Is somebody hearing me? This is time to run the race. It's not time to run with anybody. It's time to run individually. The days are evil. Oh my goodness. Man. The days are what? Evil. Run. Listen, your righteousness and holiness with God remain your greatest, your greatest prize in these last days. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's give God a big hand of praise in the house of the Lord. New York, USA, are you ready? The demonstration of the Spirit and Power Conference with the Bond Servant of Christ, John. Dates 23rd through 25th, May 2024. Thursday, 7 p.m., Friday, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. Venue, Joseph A. Floriano Rochester Convention Center, 123 East Main Street, New York, 14604. Register now for seat reservations. Visit our website, www.spiritrevelationchurch.org. There is no cost charge to receive prayer or to consult the man of God. The conference is free. free. Dimensions of the Spirit. War against the Prince of Darkness in the atmosphere of Sydney, Australia. With the bondservant of Christ, John. Venue, Sydney Olympic Park. The Dome, Sydney, Australia. Hall 5 and 6. Date, 8th through 10th, May 2024. Wednesday the 8th, time 5 p.m. Thursday the 9th, morning 10 a.m., evening 6 p.m. Friday the 10th, morning 10 a.m., evening 6 p.m. Register online to get your free tickets. www.keepthefaithministry.org slash conference. 
war against the beast of Europe with the bond servant of Christ John. 11th and 12th July 2024. Day 1, 6 p.m. Day 2, morning session, 9 a.m. Strictly for ministers. Evening session, 6 p.m. Open for everyone. Venue, PWA Silverdome, van der Hagenstraat, 2722, NT Zotermeer, Netherlands. Register now for seat reservations. Visit our website, www.spiritrevelationchurch.org. The Tribe of Fire presents International Ministers Conference with the Bond Servant of Christ John. Dates 27th through to the 29th, August 2024. Session times Day 1, 6 p.m. Day 2, Morning Session, 9 a.m. Evening Session, 6 p.m. Day 3, Morning Session, 9 a.m. Evening Session, 6 p.m. Register now for seat reservations. Visit our website www.spiritrevelationchurch.org. Venue 284 Fortrecker Road, Maitland, Cape Town, South Africa. See you in the realms.